what are the benefits of using TypeScript, how it helps us um, in uh, managing a bigger project as developers and uh, how we can integrate it into our project. Uh, so let's start. So we start with a new project uh, for a web development. First thing we, uh, what we do is we decide which library or a framework to use. So there are many uh, libraries that are like React, uh, Next.js and Vue. So these libraries uh, simplify our work and provide a lot of features uh, that makes us easy when we are de developing the features of the project. But uh, over time, uh, the project may grow uh, a big, uh, large complexity and managing all the resources of the project, all the files, all the different function and component. So it becomes difficult. At that time, we can use uh, TypeScript. So TypeScript will help us to manage our project uh, better. So it provides a lot of features with which we can uh, manage all the functions, all the files within our project. So first of all, what is TypeScript? So TypeScript uh, was developed by Microsoft in 2012. So to address a lot of shortcomings of JavaScript, TypeScript is a superset of JavaScript. What that means is uh, TypeScript is built on top of JavaScript. It has all the features that JavaScript provides, plus uh, it adds it ad additional features uh, to make TypeScript much more safer, make JavaScript much more safer to use in your project. And it allows, uh, it puts a lot of syntax uh, and uh, type safety into JavaScript. So uh, also uh, TypeScript has a tr uh, strong type system. That means it's uh, whenever you declare any variable in TypeScript, you specify a type to it, meaning what value it will store. And when uh, uh, helps us uh, to better under, uh, better store the values and pass the values to different functions in our code. Uh, when we know the type of the value, we can uh, get much better uh, tooling support from Visual Studio Codes, much better autocomplete. And TypeScript also tells us uh, whenever an issue might occur with that type. Uh, another thing with TypeScript uh, is that uh, it is a compilation uh, language. So what it means is uh, JavaScript, we can directly use into our browser, but we cannot use TypeScript. So to use TypeScript, first we have to compile it into JavaScript. And after that, uh, we can use it in our project or uh, in our browser. So uh, what are the advantages of using TypeScript? So first of all, uh, is the static typing. So uh, what that means is uh, every variable, we specify the type of value that it is going to store. Uh, same goes for functions. And uh, whatever return value uh, our function uh, may return. So this helps us to catch error at compile time, uh, reducing the likelihood of runtime errors. So we can catch error uh, while we are actually typing our code uh, based on the type of the variable. Uh, uh, TypeScript can tell us whether any error is going to occur. And uh, with that, we can fix the error before we can uh, actually run and uh, identify the error. Second thing is enhanced code quality. So uh, static typing and type checking leads to improve code quality and re readability. The developer can fix and catch and fix errors early in development process, resulting in fewer bugs and more robust application. Uh, next thing is uh, better tooling support. TypeScript is well uh, supported by modern code editors like uh, Visual Studio Code. So this provides features like autocomplete, code navigation, real-time error checking, and our developer productivity. So uh, one thing with uh, Visual Studio Code is uh, it has support for TypeScript. So whenever you specify a variable, and let's say it is going to store a string value, so then uh, when you try to look at all the functions which we can uh, use on it, so it will only give you the function uh, which can be run on string. It will not give you the entire list uh, of all the functions. Uh, like uh, it can also provide you, uh, like in normal JavaScript, it, all, it will give you a list of all the function uh, for string numbers, but in TypeScript, it will only give you those functions which are available on that uh, string type. 
So next file, uh, thing is a uh, declaration file. So uh, TypeScript allow you to declare, uh, write a declaration file. So this file end with a d.ts extension. And this provides us information about the uh, different functions uh, variable and all the return types uh, available on that function. So this uh, helps us to identify uh, work much better with the, any third party libraries and also enforced uh, type uh, enforced types and external in external code. So uh, whenever we use a third party library, so the biggest problem is uh, identifying which other, which are the functions uh, which are present inside that library. So many of time uh, we have to go to the documentation again and again to identify uh, what are all the functions uh, which are available. But with a TypeScript, you don't have to go to the documentation much. With type declaration file, once you import that library in your project, uh, it will automatically list all the functions uh, which are present. Uh, next thing is code uh, readability. So uh, one thing about TypeScript is a type annotation. So whenever you um, assign a variable a type, so it or let's say you directly assign a variable a value. So based on that uh, value, it will automatically add, allow, uh, add a type to itself. Um, so that helps us uh, in much uh, self-explanatory code. Uh, developers can quickly understand and ex uh, understand the expected data type and structure without needing to deep dive into the code. So many a time, uh, even with functions um, in TypeScript, we can identify what are the parameters that a function takes and what it returns. So that helps us to better uh, in code read uh, readability. So uh, let's look at some of the differences between TypeScript and JavaScript. So in TypeScript, uh, every variable that you create uh, functions, so all should be, uh, all have a static type to it. So uh, whatever value uh, that it's going to store, you already specified. Let's say you create a variable name and you assign a type string to it. So that name variable is only going to store uh, string values. Uh, if you try to assign it uh, some other value like a number, so at that time it will give you errors. Uh, whereas uh, in JavaScript, all the variables that you declare are of a dynamic. So uh, if you create a name variable in JavaScript, assign it a string uh, somewhere down the uh, code, you can also assign some other value to it, uh, like uh, numbers, uh, an array, or even booleans, and it will uh, take that value without any complaint. Uh, another, uh, next thing is uh, TypeScript requires you to compile your code from TypeScript to JavaScript before it can be used in uh, your application or in your browser. Whereas uh, in JavaScript, you directly type the code and it is ready to be used anywhere uh, where it is supported. Uh, next is uh, TypeScript benefits from excellent tooling support. Uh, popular code editors like Visual Studio Code provide features such as autocomplete code, um, real-time error checking, uh, specific to TypeScript, whereas uh, JavaScript does have a uh, lot of like uh, tooling and libraries, but uh, it lacks advanced uh, development features uh, like static type checking, uh, autocomplete. Even autocomplete is not that much great uh, in Visual Studio Code for JavaScript. Okay, so let's look at some of the TypeScript feature. So first thing is uh, type annotation. So type annotation allows developer to explicitly specify the data type of a variable, uh, function parameters and the return types, return value in uh, TypeScript code. So uh, for example, uh, let's say we create a variable called age and it is going to store a number. So we will assign it the type of number and assign the value. So uh, like this, uh, we specified a variable called let then we specify the variable name, then we assign a type to it uh, using the colon, and then we assign the value to it. Uh, so this is just one type uh, number, 
So there are different types like string, uh, which is used to assign a string to a variable. Then we have Boolean uh, for storing true or false value. Null uh, to store uh, absence of value, meaning there is no value to it. Uh, undefined when we just want to create a variable without actually uh, assigning it any value. Uh, objects or uh, there is a type called any. Uh, so this type is used, uh, let's say you don't want to use uh, any type and the variable might store uh, any type of value throughout its uh, lifetime. So that time you can create a any type. Okay, so this is an example of the TypeScript file. Uh, so this file usually uh, ends up with a T, uh, TS extension, like JavaScript has JS, uh, TypeScript has TS extension. So these are some of the types in TypeScript. So first one is number. So to create a number type, you first specify the variable name, then you use colon and you specify the type that the variable is going to store. And then you assign the uh, number or a value to it. Same goes for string. So whenever you have string value, you're going to use a uh, string type and assign the a string value to it. Uh, another great thing about uh, TypeScript is called type inference. So uh, many times you don't even have to specify this uh, string or number. You just have to assign that value to that uh, variable. And based on the value that you have assigned, so it will automatically pick up a type for that uh, variable. Uh, so this is how you create a Boolean variable. Uh, you just use a type Boolean. And this variable uh, where you assign the type to it, they are going to store only that uh, those values. Uh, you will not be able to assign any other value to it. Uh, this is how you create an object. You specify object and you can then specify the keys in the object. To create an array, uh, you can use the square brackets uh, to specify it is an array. And last one is the any type where you can assign any value to the variable. Uh, so that uh, becomes something like JavaScript, normal JavaScript, where you can add, assign any very, uh, value to a variable. Uh, so these are some of the custom types in uh, JavaScript, uh, TypeScript. So uh, let's say you want an array. Uh, which is only going to store uh, string uh, values. So at that time, you first specify the type like this, and you, then you specify the uh, square brackets. Same goes for string. Then we have union type. Let's say a variable is going to store more than one type. Uh, let's say it's going to store a number and a string. So at that time, you can use the union type to specify that the var uh, variable might store uh, string or uh, numbers. Same goes for uh, intersection. So intersection types allow you to, what it allows you to do is, uh, let's say you created multiple types uh, and uh, you, want, uh, you want another type to be created, which is a combination of uh, your previous types. So that time uh, you can use the intersection type and you can use the end operator to join those types. Uh, then we have interfaces. So interfaces is like um, like an important topic in uh, TypeScript. So what interfaces allows you to do is, uh, it allows you to create an object uh, with all the uh, keys and the type it is going to store. And uh, then we have enums. So enum allows you to do is uh, create named constant. So uh, let me give you an example. Uh, let's say you want to, let's say there are user account and you want to store the different, uh, specify the different statuses of the account. Like the account is active, disabled, or let's say it is pending for approval. So instead of directly assigning it uh, some numerical value, you can create a, a enum object where you specify the name, uh, let's say active, and then you assign a value to it. Uh, let's say a one. So you, spe uh, so you uh, specify it like uh, enum uh, user status, then uh, active equal to one, disabled equal to two, uh, pending equal to three, something like that. And uh, next is function type. So over here, uh, 
we can even create a function uh, as a type. So in the function type, we specify the parameters that the function is going to take and the return value. We don't have to specify the body of the function. Okay? So, uh, so these are the examples of the uh, array type. So uh, over here, if you see uh, this names uh, variable is storing, uh, it is a, it is storing string, string values, uh, which is of array type. So it is storing array uh, where all the values in the arrays are string. Then we have enums, uh, the named constant. So we can create uh, enum like this using the enum keyword. And then we specify the name. And then we specify all the values inside that enum. And this is a union type uh, where we can specify uh, more than, okay, sorry, uh, where we can specif uh, specify more than one type of uh, value that the variable is going to store. Uh, like example over here, this is a result variable which is storing string, number, and boolean. And then uh, we, uh, I have specified uh, true to it. So this is a legal uh, value. Uh, even if I uh, change this value to a number, so it will still accept it. Uh, even if I change it to string, so it will still be allowed. But if I change it to some other value like an array, so at that time it will give me an error. Then we have uh, intersection type. Uh, so this is the case when you have created types and you want to join them uh, to create another new type. So whenever you're creating a type, right? So you have to use this type variable, uh, type keyword in front of the variable name. Then uh, you specify the uh, uh, key of the, or the name for that variable and what is the value that it is going to store. Uh, since in my, uh, this case, uh, I have created a type called person and this person type is a combination of a type uh, where we have specified a name and an age. So this end operator will join uh, these two very, uh, these two different types and uh, those two types will be available on this person. Uh, here we have an interface. So, uh, for better understanding of interface, uh, we usually start them with an I and then the interface name. And uh, the most important is the keyword. Then inside this, uh, we create like an object and inside this object, we specify the uh, different keys of the, uh, this object. So this object, uh, this ob user object is, has a name uh, which is storing a uh, string. Then we have age which is storing number. And the last one is uh, this uh, get age. So this is a function type and we have specified it with uh, round braces. Since uh, this is empty, uh, that means it is not going to take any value. Uh, and then we have specified the arrow, arrow functions and then the uh, number. So this function doesn't have any input uh, parameters but whatever that function will return. So that will be of type and number. Okay. Uh, then uh, I have assigned this uh, interface to a variable uh, new user. And then I have specified all the keys. Uh, so what uh, this interface does is uh, if you specify them in one file, uh, let's say even for a function that we, uh, and when we uh, import that function to some other file, we exactly know what are the different values uh, that it is going to take. Uh, so uh, the second feature is interfaces, which I've specified. So uh, so these are like, um, you can shape an object with different keys of that object and specify what are the values uh, that uh, those keys are going to store. Uh, next, we have uh, another feature, generics. So generic is like an advanced feature in TypeScript. So what generic does is, uh, let's say you create a function and that function, uh, uh, let's say it is for uh, swapping two numbers. You're going to uh, provide it to numbers. Uh, it is going to swap them and return the value. Uh, but this function is only for now taking uh, numbers. Uh, let's say we want to extend it to some other uh, type. Let's say we want to pass in string or let's say even uh, let's say array. 
so in that case instead of writing individual function for each of these cases we can cre uh, create a single function and create a uh, make it a generic function so what it does is based on the type of variable um, uh, it receives it automatically identifies the type and uh, it will adjust itself okay. so uh, yeah so this is an example of the generics so here we have a swap function so this t over here uh, specifies the type it is going to accept uh, over here we have the function parameters uh, a and b and we are assigning that uh, type uh, to this a and b so let's say this uh, t we pass it as a string then both a and b uh, will be uh, considered as string and then it returns an array with uh, uh, those types uh, so since uh, let's say we pass it as a string then the return string automatically becomes a uh, string and we just uh, return the value since uh, okay so this is the example since uh, we are passing uh, both numbers to it so this t will um, identify it that the numbers are being passed and then assign this number type to these two variables and it will also set the return type to number and then uh, it will whatever value that comes out of this function will be treated as number uh, same uh, for string if we pass string value to it so it will um, automatically identify that uh, it is a string and it will assign those variable of type string okay so uh, let's look at how we can set up uh, typescript in our project so first thing for setting up typescript uh, you require node.js and npm installed so uh, to install this you can go to the nodes official website and you can download uh, node.js which also comes with uh, npm so after installing uh, you can ro uh, run the node minus v or and uh, npm minus v to check the version which is installed so this also uh, helps us uh, to identify both the packages are installed properly or not so next thing is uh, using npm we are going to install typescript so, uh, so for that we will use the command npm install minus g typescript so this will install typescript on a global level so uh, no matter which directory or uh, which folder we uh, we are inside uh, we can use typescript over there without uh, like uh, it being to a specific directory. So after uh, running the command, we can run the command tsc minus v to check whether uh, TypeScript is installed or not. So tsc is the command to invoke uh, TypeScript. Okay, so, uh, okay, yeah. So, uh, so once we set up our project, we need to initialize that project as a TypeScript project. So to do that, uh, inside that directory, we have to run the tsc minus minus init command. So this command will uh, create a tsconfig.json file, uh, which we can configure uh, uh, to configure our compiler. Uh, so whatever settings that you change in the tsconfig file, those will be picked up by the T, uh, TypeScript compiler when you uh, run the command. Okay. Uh, over here, I have an empty project. Uh, I only have an index.html, uh, which is referencing a dist folder and main.js inside of it. Uh, then we have two input variables and one button. Uh, we have two folders over here, which are both empty. Uh, to initialize this project first into TypeScript project, uh, we will open the command. Uh, first, we, uh, I already have the uh, TypeScript installed, so I don't have to run the uh, npm install minus g TypeScript. Uh, so first command that you will run uh, to initialize this directory is tsc minus minus int. So uh, we'll have to wait a little while, and uh, this will create a uh, tsconfig file inside this directory. Uh, this is the file which is generated after running this command. So this has all the settings uh, which you are going to use for your project. So these are uh, all the mm, options and most of them are uh, 
uh, already commented uh, many of these options uh, you are not going to use so for our project uh, so first of all what we'll do is we'll specify an outer where here it is we'll uncomment this line and we specify to dist uh, here also we can specify the file which uh, the javascript will be uh, or typescript will be compiled to then uh, we will use this uh, declaration uh, we will set it to true so this will generate the uh, dot uh, d dot ts file then uh, we can specify the type module uh, we can specify over here the target so uh, like i mentioned that uh, all the typescript code gets compiled to javascript so over here we can specify uh, which version of javascript it needs to be compiled to if i remove this and just uh, space uh, press control and space uh, so this will auto give me an autocomplete list of all the options uh, which are available. Uh, next is the module type. Uh, so this will give us an, a different option like common JS, uh, different uh, ES versions, node. And then uh, next line that we will be uncommenting is a router. So over here we specify uh, which folder uh, where all our TypeScript file will be present. So over here. Let's go SRC. Uh, so, yeah. Now uh, we just have to create one file. Main dot ts. Let's enter. So this will create a file. Now, uh, so let's look at different types. So to create a number. Uh, so one thing I mentioned about uh, type inference. So whenever we uh, assign a value to a variable, it will automatically pick up that type. So if I hover over this, uh, it will tell me uh, the type. So let's say I go st dot, and now uh, in this autocomplete box, all these functions uh, which are shown over here are only related to. Let's look at this file uh, since we are already uh, short on time. Okay, uh, so to create a boolean, we assign a boolean type to it. So once we uh, specify all our code inside this uh, TypeScript file. We can then uh, run the command tsc tsc and then just click on enter. So it will take a little time and then it will comp uh, compile it to a main uh, JavaScript file over here. So once you run this command, it will automatically create a uh, JavaScript uh, code for it. Then it will also create a, a type file. So this has all the type and the uh, different parameters take. Uh, so for example, this uh, main.ts file had a function add number uh, where we specified that it is going to take two number. So based on this, uh, it generated the uh, main.d.ts uh, uh, with the function name and uh, the parameter it, it is going to take. So let's say next time we create a module out of it and we want to import this function that time we will know what are the different parameters that function is already taking and what type of value it is re returning. Since it is void over here, it will not return. Uh, these are some of the resources for TypeScript. Uh, so if you want to learn TypeScript, there is a website called TypeScript Playground uh, where it allows you to uh, practice with TypeScript without actually having to set up on your local device. Uh, second thing is the official TypeScript documentation. So this will uh, list you, uh, give you a list of all the different types which are available in TypeScript. What are the different methods you can use? And there are a uh, few courses also in our uh, Udemy account if you want to learn TypeScript. Uh, 